Next, I'd like to look at a random number generator using a bit processor in assembly. The code we're going to be using comes from Bison Academy. Let's start with count RB0. That's going to count how many times I hit RB0. Clicking on that, here's your program. Again, starting at address 800, I'm going to make port A output. This time, however, Trist B is input. If I now load 1, 1 is input, 0 is output. All the push buttons are now input. Port C, D, E are output. Everybody's binary. Clearing port C, starting from 0. I will then check. I'm going to check every time you push the button, RB0. Port B, pin 0, goes high. If it is currently high, it will say port B, pin 0 is not clear, so I don't skip. I keep on looping, keep on checking, keep on checking. Once I release the button and it goes clear, I skip of clear. I skip out of that loop. I then skip of set. As long as it's clear, I don't skip. I keep on checking. As soon as I push the button, when the pin goes high, I'll increment port C, put the results in port C, and repeat. This is a way to look for rising edge, check for load, check that high, and count. To download that code, let's create a new file, paste, save it as, get the name. Name doesn't really matter, but I like to be consistent. Count rb0. .asm. I now go over here, delete what we had last time, and add count rb0. That should be my program that I can now compile and download. If I compile it, F10 is a shortcut. There it succeeded. That created the hex file. I can now go over to the COM port, hit reset, enter, download a new file, count rb0.hex, there it is. There's your program. If you flip over uh, to video, I can see that every time I count on rb0, oh, let's click there, port z is counting. Binary 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I am now counting using port B, pin 0, push button as an input. You can also notice right here on the light, every time I hit RB0, the light blinks on and off. Previously the buttons weren't working because the I.O. ports were output. I've now made port B input, which means that the buttons now control the port as an input, and the buttons are driving it. When you press it, I get logic 1, the light turns on. RB0 is the only one tied to the counter because of the code. So that's a counter. So here's a problem. Can I build a random number generator by counting really fast? That's the program random. What that does is instead of counting every time I hit the button, I'm going to sit there and say bit test skip if clear. If the button has been pushed, I don't skip, I increment a variable called i add it with a 7, and repeat it. If I don't push the button, I skip. So I'm only going to increment the counter while the button's being held down. Essentially, it counts really, really fast as long as you hold the button down. The duration that you hold the button down tells you what the count is. So let's copy that into assembly and create a new program. random.assembler add random and I'm going to modify it slightly let's comment out this line what this does is as long as I hold the button down I don't skip as long as I don't hold the button down I'm going to increment a variable called die 
Boop, sit, put die. Oh, increment die, put the result in W. Move W to the variable called die, and then also move it to port C and repeat. So it's going to count really, really fast as long as I hold the button down. As soon as I release the button, the value is, is just held. Die is a variable. Up at the start of the program, I've now got this line of code. Die equals zero. The pick has 4K of RAM. I can put my variables anywhere I want in RAM. Here I just chose memory location zero. The upper spot of memory you have to watch out at address um, FF something. That's where the variable, the ports are. Your port A, port B, port C. So as long as you keep away from the high part of memory, you can store your variables wherever you like. What this code does, you compile it and download it. Here is reset, enter, transfer random.x. Here's your program, fairly short. If I look at the camera now, every time I hit RB0, port C looks like it's all on. It's actually counting really, really fast. When I release, that was the number I counted to. 11110011 binary. Hold it down, count really fast, release. Every time I release, I get a new random number. If I don't want a number between 0 and 255, I can count mod 8, let's say. One way to count mod 8 is that line of code that I just commented out. I can find it. There it is. Put the line of code back in there. What that does is anything in 0 is 0. That clears out the high 5 bits, leaving the low 3 bits alone. The low 3 bits count 0 through 7, or mod 8. I'm going to count mod 8. This is, this is an 8-sided die. If I compile, download, I now have this new improved code. This is a 8-sided die, count 0 through 7. They're counted as 2, 1. Notice while I hold it down, only 3 lights are turned on. It's counting mod 7. All the other lights are cleared because of the AND 0, 7. 1, 2, 1, 7. Let's see if we can get a 6. So 5, 7, 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 5, 3, well, it still looks like a random number generator. You should be able to get any number in the 0 through 7 with uniform probability. One thing to note, a number mod 8 is actually very easy to do in assembly. To do mod 8, I just end it with 0, 7. Powers of 2 are easy. Anything that's not a power of 2 is hard. Essentially, it's kind of like saying, what if I take the number 1, 2, 3, 4, mod 10, what's the result? And pretty clearly, take 1, 2, 3, 4, take the 1 stitch that the answer is 4. If I say, what is 1, 2, 3, 4, mod 9, suddenly that's a hard, hard question. Same thing in binary. As long as I stick to a power of 2, anything mod 8 is just basically uh, mod or and it with 8 minus 1, 7. Mod 16 would be and it with 16 minus 1, 15. Mod 32 is and it with 31. If it's not a power 2, suddenly it gets hard trying to take the remainder. Uh, one way to do that is just say I'm going to keep on adding. If the result is equal to 6, or 6 out of die, then I'll clear it. Um, we'll leave that as a homework problem. But for now, you actually have now a $40 8 side of die.